When just starting out or looking for a career move, the question is always, should I go for a large multinational firm or go for a small boutique engineering firm? As both of them have their benefits and drawbacks. And so depending on where you are in your career and what you're looking for, decision may change over time as well. Well, I've worked at a range of firms from a small boutique engineering firm, and then also moved in to later in my career to two multinational design firms. So I can provide a unique insight into either option. The first question that pops into most people's heads is how much you're going to get paid. And typically you will get more money at those large multinational design firms. However, this is not always the case as some smaller design firms will offer you profit shares depending on the size of the company. And so you may be more encouraged to go for those small firms to get hands on with the running of the business. With those big firms, as they normally have larger overheads and higher positions, you typically will get more money at those positions as well. And in the larger firms, they cover sometimes some of your insurances like salary continuance insurance. So when you're looking at the overall package, the overall package may be more beneficial from your large firm versus your small firm. This is not to say that you should just go for those large firms for those bigger pays. As a small firm, you will get a more rounded experience. So you will get to design things from start to finish. So the type of projects that you get to work on may be smaller, but you will get to deal with the architect one-on-one. -on -one. You will get to deal with the clients. You will get to deal with variations and building a building from start to finish. So if you're at the right small design firm, you may even be winning architectural awards for the type of projects that you're working on. As many of the projects that I worked on, especially later in my career, won many architectural awards. So a small project can be just as complex as a larger project. Where the projects you get at the larger firms are definitely more prestigious. They're normally those bigger game changer, city changer buildings. However, on those bigger projects, it will not be until much later into your career that you actually get to run or look at them. Normally, especially early on, you're only looking at one aspect. So you may be designing a couple of slabs. You may be designing a couple of columns. And you, or you may be just looking at the stability of the design. You will not get to see the whole package. Where you're a smaller firm, because those projects are smaller, you need to generally be more nimble. Having all aspects from start to finish, looking at the project, you'll be doing the site visits all the way through to dealing with the builder and that full design aspect. You also get to deal with more variations, which are normally quite later in your career, early on in a smaller company. So you'll get a more rounded experience. Whether you decide to choose big or small, don't forget to hit the like button. Not only does it help me out, but also encourages me to keep doing what I'm doing. Another major difference between a large and a small firm is the type of training that you receive at them. At those bigger firms, they typically have a more structured training as they have more people to pull on that can present and lecture to give you more of a thorough understanding about how structures are put together. But it's more of a structured methodology than specifically bespoke to yourself. Where at a smaller firm, you get more of a mentory relationship where you're designing on the go and ad hocly, people will be looking over your shoulder, helping you out in aspects so you get that more hands-on experience. You get to give the hands dirty actually when you're designing things. So you get direct feedback about how you're progressing and what type of things you need to work on. So a small firm is more of an ad hoc relationship where you're actually designing by doing and you're picking it up over time. Where a larger firm will give you that more structured aspect of design. Now the type of projects you will get to work on at a big multinational will be more broad range. So you'll be able to work on commercial jobs, you'll be able to work on residential jobs, you'll be able to work on shopping centers, you'll be able to work on hospitals, you'll be able to work on infrastructure as they have all these type of streams that they're trying to generate projects from. So you'll be able to get a broad range of experience of different projects. Where at a smaller firm, they're typically more bespoke and boutique, focusing on one area, but doing it really well. So just because they're a smaller firm doesn't mean they won't be good. They may be so boutique that they know exactly what the client wants and how to put together a structure for a specific design. Where at the bigger firms, you'll get potentially those bigger projects that are more prestigious, but maybe you will not get a solid understanding about the whole project from start to finish. Career progression is also quite varying between your large and small firms. See, at a large firm, you normally have specific roles and positions, and they have specific goal sets and skills that you need to sit in those different positions. So you'll know what you need to hit to get a graduate. You know what you need to hit to hit a project engineer or design engineer. You know what you hit, need to hit for a senior engineer, a principal engineer, associate engineer. And also generally with those different positions, there's a big difference between a senior engineer at a small design firm versus a senior engineer at a large firm. Now people are going, oh, surely the senior engineer at the large firm is better. I'd have you probably rethink that. As a senior engineer at a smaller firm has had to get more hands-on experience. They've had to quote projects. They've had to make sure they're managing finances. They've had to make sure they're managing the clients, the architects, 
and all the stakeholders. They've had to make sure that they're designing the building from start to finish. They've actually built buildings from scratch. They've actually got more iterations compared to a large firm. As at a large firm, you work on those bigger projects. So you may only be working on once every couple of months or once every couple of years, depending on how big that project is. Where at a smaller firm, you're normally this quick repetition of smaller projects. So you get to see varying different aspects of design, but how things go together, but how to detail buildings, get the feedback directly from clients. So early on in your career, you you get progressed a lot faster at those smaller firms okay, and you get a more rounded experience. However, later on, as you start to hit that glass ceiling, there's not so many of those senior to upper levels. So when you're approaching through the senior to mid career, it's probably more advantageous to be at your larger firms as they have those positions that you can move into. We're starting to manage staff, starting to look at those bigger projects, dealing with clients a bit more. You will potentially hit that ceiling again as there's only so many positions you have and you're vying against so many people. But at the smaller firm, depending on what you're doing, they may actually offer you a partnership. So later on in your career, it may be better to go back to the smaller firm as you can be more in the management role where the bigger firm, you're vying with so many people for those upper positions. So early on in your career, it may be better to either be at a smaller firm or a larger firm, depending on what type of experience you're getting. Where mid-career, definitely larger firms are definitely more advantageous. However, it's really about, are you still learning? Culture is another really big thing that you gotta look for in a company. And this is really subjective. And this will be different between different companies, different locations, and even different managers. Typically, they will try and care for you more at the smaller company as they know who you are and how much of an impact you'll have if you leave. As a smaller company, you're more than just a number, you're part of the company. And if you leave, it has a big impact on that company. If we were at a bigger company, you can be seen more just as a number sometimes, as they can always find someone else to fill your spot. With the current work environment, stability is also high on everyone's priority. So will it be better for you to work at a smaller company or a bigger company? And this really depends. As sometimes at a smaller company, you may be more stable and may be more likely to keep your job, but it will cost the owner quite a bit more. You see, they know you as a person. They know what impacts will have on your life is if you don't have that job or they put you on part time. So at a smaller firm, as it's a family built environment, they're more likely to step in as a group to try and make sure everyone stays solid with the company. Where at a bigger firm, there's also many different sectors that you can potentially work on. So if one sector is dropped off, other sectors may be picked up. So you may be able to move into those sectors to help progress your career in those locations. Sometimes with, especially with a big multinational company, they potentially have different offices around the whole country. So there may be sometimes some offices are flat out while other offices are slightly quiet. So they can slowly feed some of the work from those busy locations to the quiet locations. So you may be to work on different projects around different states. So there's really pros and cons of either a small company or a big company when you're talking about stability. And this is really depending on the type of sectors, the type of jobs they work on and the company owner. So if you're valuable to them, they're more likely to hold on to you as if they have to look for another person, it's harder for them to train up. Applying for a job is also quite different between a small company and a big company. And you may think the bigger company may be harder to employ someone, but this may not be the case as a big company has a big group behind them. So if there's one person that's slightly holding them back, you potentially don't make a pass probation and then they can move on to someone else. Where if you're coming into a smaller team, you can have a big impact on that team. So they may be more cautious about employing you. However, if you're able to build up the relationship with that person, you potentially have that one-on-one -on -one relationship as opposed to the big company, which is just looking at your stats on paper and what they get from feedback from other people. So sometimes a smaller firm, though it may be harder, if you can build up the relationship with the owner, they're more likely to employ you. Where at a bigger firm, if you're good on paper and you can get good references, it may be easy to get a job at those locations. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, I have links to my Patreon in the below description, like these members here. I'd just like to give a big shout out to them and they've made the content possible for everyone else to see. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.